Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're gonna be checking out the brand new Masters of the Universe Origins Battle Cat. That is right, my friends. That is one thing that Origins is really doing a great job with right out the gate, is we're not just getting action figures, but we're getting beasts and vehicles, which as I said in my review of the Sky Sled, I think that is very important because all of the big creatures and the vehicles and the play sets are all very important components of the original Masters of the Universe toy line, in my opinion. And of course, Battle Cat is our main hero's sidekick, so we gotta have him. And it's really awesome that we're getting him right away in the first wave. And I gotta say, man, I am loving the packaging that Mattel is doing with these figures. Much like we saw with the Sky Sled, Mattel is mimicking the style of the vintage Battle Cat packaging here, and it is so awesome. We've got this beautiful window box that fully showcases the Battle Cat action figure within, but then we've got this great little top flap on the top that features some brand new original artwork, which is absolutely gorgeous and is definitely paying homage to that original Battle Cat artwork, um, complete with the helmet kind of sitting on the rock next to an unmatched battle cat it is so very cool i love it and uh i love looking at all the little details in the background of this artwork as well you can see castle grayskull in the background here and up on the tower at the laser is totally some unnamed dwarf looking character it's amazing i love it and then over here you can see kind of like a slew of what's probably some villains that guy in the front Absolutely looks like he's straight out of the Fuerza T toy line. That has got to be a reference right there. I love it. But some really cool stuff going on with this box here. Let's go ahead and rotate this around to the backside. So you can see that on the top, it also features some beautiful full color artwork of He-Man on Battle Cat doing battle against Skeletor. Um, I love like kind of the embossed glossy nature of the characters that's on this artwork. It really makes it kind of shine and stand out. It is so beautiful. And then down below that, we've got the cross cell as well as our action feature call out. Again, a reference to the vintage packaging, but of course, the only real action feature with Battle Cat is the remo removable armor and the art articulation points. Now one thing I think is interesting I need to point out is that the box I have here is definitely the international release. Uh, you can see that there is a lot of different languages on the back of the box and even the uh, little burst call out on the front that usually just states modern posing retro play uh, is trilingual. I don't know if that means all of them are going to be this way or if this just happens to be the version that I got from Walmart's website uh, because like a lot of the other uh, Masters of the Universe Origins figures so far this came from walmart.com uh, as it's been kind of popping in and out of stock. Luckily, the box is in really good shape for this one, but it is interesting that I got a multilingual box. So amazing packaging aside, let's go ahead and get this opened up so we can get a closer look at our brand new Battle Cat. All right, so we've got Battle Cat outside of the box. Let's go ahead and start with the tape measure. So you can see from the front of his nose to the, uh, well, the area where his tail is is about nine inches long. And then the figure itself stands about five inches to the top of his body. The saddle itself kind of goes up to a full seven inches tall. So he is sized for the five and a half inch Masters of the Universe Origins figures. Uh, and we'll We'll do some comparisons later with the vintage one. He is bigger than the vintage Battle Cat and slightly smaller than the Classics one. So I'll show you that here in just a bit. Overall, the colors are very bright and very vibrant on this guy. Uh, one thing that really stands out to me is that the saddle and the mask uh, this time around are a much brighter red. And you'll see that we've got painted eyes. Uh, this is a bit of an improvement over the vintage Battle Cat because, of course, the helmet was totally left unpainted on that uh, but in the filmation animated series he had the eyes like that so this brighter red color with the painted eyes kind of gives him an overall more filmation style look which is really cool uh, but the armor and the shape of the mask and everything itself is absolutely based on the way that that original armor looked on that vintage action figure uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this just to show you how that works. It's very similar to the vintage action figure. The mask just kind of pulls off. You can see that it's shaped for his head. So it just kind of 
plugs on just like how the vintage figure worked, so it's easy to pop that off. And then the saddle has the same little strap with the little notch right underneath the figure. Um, it's literally designed exactly the same way as the vintage saddle. So familiar territory for anybody who's ever had an original Battle Cat action figure. So this, of course, reveals our Battle Cat without the armor, which I guess you could call Cringer, but of course in the original toy line before the Filmation cartoon, he was just Battle Cat without the helmet on, um, so it could go really either way, but of course he's quite ferocious looking for being Cringer. Uh, it's really interesting to note that the way they painted the eyes on this is just with two little black dots. Uh, the eyeballs themselves are the same green plastic as the rest, um, so there's a lot less paint deco here, so I don't know, I found it interesting that we got some better paint on the helmet, but not on the eyes underneath, um, because even on the vintage Battle Cat, he had like the little white dots inside the black eyes, so a uh, little less paint there. Uh, we've got the yellow stripes on there, of course. Now, I did notice that there are some spots where like the yellow paint didn't quite get into the crevices of the uh, sculpted fur. You'll see some spots where there's some yellow missing, but it almost seems like that's just the way the masking worked from the paint, um, so I don't know if that's going to be that way on all of them. It kind of seems like it is just going to be that way. Uh, he's got some big old bright white teeth. The inside of his mouth is all red there, um, which actually that's kind of cool, like the red going around the mouth, because that's kind of a nice nod to uh, uh, the some of the earlier versions of the vintage Battle Cat. But however, no stripes on the tail. Just got a solid green tail. So the figure itself is actually uh, kind of hollow in the torso itself. I don't know if you can hear that, but I was uh, surprised how lightweight he is. He actually feels a lot like the vintage Battle Cat, but he does have a little bit more weight, of course, because the legs uh, are jointed, so they are a bit more of a solid plastic than the body itself, but the body is kind of like that same hollow plastic just like on the vintage action figure. And we do have some more articulation here. If you guys remember, of course, the vintage Battle Cat was just in a set kind of battle-ready pose. There was no articulation whatsoever. So this time around, We've got articulation at the neck, so check that out. I really like that. You can move the neck up and down, and then the head itself is individually articulated. Look at that. So you can turn the head side to side. You can move the neck up and down. So that's a pretty great range of movement there with the head. Plus, as you probably saw already, the mouth can open and close. You got that hinged jaw, which is really cool. The tail is on a hinge joint there, so it can swivel around as well as move up and down. And then we come to the legs. So the legs can move forwards and backwards, just like that. You can see the joints are actually kind of nice and tight too. Of course, that's gonna break up the lines a little bit, but there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, you know, you're gonna move the legs forwards and backwards. They don't go outwards or inwards. They don't move that way. It's just forwards and backwards. Uh, you've got knee joints that allow swivels and bends at the knees on both the front legs and the back legs. But this is a part that I'm a little bummed out by. There is no articulation in the ankles. So on one hand, that means he's got a nice solid stance, right? You, you don't have to worry about the ankles being loose or folding or anything like that. So he stands up. The downside to this is that it does limit the posability options with Battle Cats because he's got articulated knees, but that doesn't really do any good because his feet have to always be flat. So if we're bending his knees, I mean, there's just not a lot of poses you can get. You'll notice like, even if I want to get like a bent legged pose on the front, like this right here is as far back as the shoulder joint goes. So like, I can't even get like the legs bent that much. You can't really pull off the uh, like creeping pose or like the battle stance of the vintage battle cat. Um, you almost have to pose him with his legs kind of standing straight up and down. There's really not a lot of variance there. So um, that is certainly one criticism that I have on this. I love the added articulation, but the lack of ankles almost makes the knee joints kind of pointless because there's not a whole lot of ways you can pose them around. Now, of course, if we're talking about kids playing with it, I mean, that's great that they'll be able to do things like get some pounces and stuff like that by bending the knees and everything. But if we're talking strictly from posing him on your shelf, like from a collector's standpoint, you're just not going to be able to get a lot of poses out of his legs because his feet are always stuck in this one pose right here. Okay, so I got the armor back on Battle Cat. We have to bring in He-Man. We got to see our pair side by side here. And I will say that this version of Battle Cat stands really tall next to this He-Man. Um, and I think part of that is just because of the legs, like I was just talking about 
where he's basically standing straight up, but it makes him look like a really, really huge cat. But you can get He-Man sitting on his saddle, which does look fantastic. Uh, He-Man sits on there very nicely, and it just looks really, really cool. And again, I got to point out how great I think it is that we're getting Battle Cat right out the gate in wave one, right there with He-Man, because these two go hand in hand, in my opinion. It's so great getting them together in that first assortment. All right, guys, it's comparison time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Masters of the Universe Classics Battle Cat here, and I'm going to show him in several different poses, armor on and armor off, uh, just so you can really see what's going on here with the new figure. Um, it's really interesting because overall he's smaller uh, than the Classics Battle Cat, but he stands taller than him, again, because of those straight legs. So that's really interesting seeing them side by side. Um, but of course, this is also the difference between a mass-released cat uh, in the Origins Battle Cat here and a direct-to-collector, like, fully decked-out version in the Classics Battle Cat, which is why he got the much bigger paint deco and all the extra articulation. And then we're going to stand him alongside his inspiration, the Vintage Battle Cat from 1982. Such an iconic toy, in my opinion, and it's pretty cool looking at these two side by side. Again, you can really see the size difference, but that's because that original figure was stuck in the one pose where he's kind of crouching. The new one's legs are standing a bit more up and down, uh, but it's still pretty neat looking at these two side by side, armor on and armor off to get a good comparison between the two figures. And this is something else that I wanted to talk about. The new armor and the new helmet are almost identical in size and sculpt to the Vintage Battle Cat. Meaning you can actually fit those armor pieces on your Vintage Battle Cat and kind of create a more filmation look for your Vintage Battle Cat. Something that's pretty interesting that I thought some of you might appreciate. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Origins Battle Cat. This is part of that initial assortment. These figures are exclusive to Walmart stores in 2020, and I believe the official release date in store is August 1st. Now, these have been popping in and out of stock randomly on Walmart.com, which is how I got this Battle Cat. And I once again have to give a very special thanks to my friend Carlos, who runs the Masters of the Universe Origins and Masters of the WWE Universe Facebook group uh, because he once again helped me by snagging one of these off of walmart.com at one of the times that they went up for sale. Make sure you go check out that Facebook group. If you're not already a member, I'll link it in the video description down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.